Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studios presented by Celebs.com up here at Sundance, Lindsay, Dermot, Calvin. Firstly, day of. Yes. How does that feel for you? Is yeah. it? It's good, man. I'm really excited. We've been here for four days, so uh, it feels like it's time to, to get going on this. <laughs> of course, you're a, almost a Sundance veteran at your young age. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, how's it, does, it, does it feel like family at this stage, or do you still get a case of the nerves? Um, the nerves are good. It feels like family for sure. The programmers, I, I love hanging out with those guys, and you know, I love this place. And of course, The Rambler started off as a short as well. Yeah. Um, so was it always your intention to bust it out into a feature? Pretty much after we completed the short, that, that idea became, so yeah. Yeah, and how early... I mean, I know Lindsay, obviously, been a muse from the beginning. Absolutely. Um, when did Dermot come into the picture? Right when the project started becoming real. And, and it was kind of told to me that, like, to, in order to make a movie like this, you need a saleable talent. And then his name came right up. And I was like, absolutely, let's meet that guy. So, As, you know, people kind of look at people's work when they, or they know it just inherently, what for you was, who, which Dermot was your Dermot? <laughs> Oh, um, it was it was an amalgam of the of the Young Guns Dermot and the and the Dermot from um, Undertale together. Okay, so not about not Dermot. about Schmidt Dermot. Yeah. No. Well, I do love that Dermot. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good Dermot. Even I'll admit. Yeah, that, that was a good one. Yeah. So, for you, what was the first time you met Calvin? Was it over the phone, or did you sit down in a cafe? No, somewhere? you know, he sent me a letter and uh, either um, you know a DVD. So I, I was able to see the short. But I also watched The Oregonian, which was in competition, I think, two years ago, or at least was at the, yeah, festival, midnight, yeah. at the same midnight yeah. uh, branch that we're in right. now. Um, and, um, you know, just that opening where she comes to life in this car wreck, that feeling right. of, of being, like, really brutalized and not knowing how right. you got there. Uh, really appealed to me. <laughs> and, and in this, you know, you have some of the same sensation. A lot of movies leave you at the end wondering. You talk about it at dinner with your friends. This one, you know, yeah. holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously it premieres tonight, midnight screening. It's perfect. It's, yeah. so, it's such a freaky movie, man. I hope everybody comes drunk. Yeah. Well, I guess they also do. They, they, they don't. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Calvin, <laughs> drunk or cold. No, that's what I mean. You know, the, the freakier the audience, the better this movie's going to be. That's yeah. the, you know, this, I also, I don't know the programmers, but they stopped me last night and they were so gleeful yeah. about having the Rambler in their festival. You know, they got a hundred movies to deal with and yeah. they have a little space left for the Rambler because it is what it's, yeah. you know, it's what it is. It must also be nice when you are the Rambler. And that's awesome too, I have to admit, for sure. Yeah. To be a title character and not be the guy's name. Yeah. yeah. And you never learn it, her character's name. The girl, you do, that, that's all you know her as. Yeah. Uh, and the Oregonian also had like such minimal dialogue, but all these kind of crazy sounds that drove some people completely fucking nuts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so is, that, is there a continuation of that here, or is this like much more dialogue driven? Like, um, did you want to. Th there's more dialogue, but I try not to overuse words yeah. and I do incorporate the um, sound design hopefully it bleeds over enough it'll be more more talking for sure yeah hopefully not too much though how's it changed between you and Lindsay over the years like is it just still the same shorthand you've had it the whole time or or have you found that now that she's had so many other experiences working with other directors <laughs> that you have to kind of bring a different game I you know I think I have to bring a different game for everything we do like every scene is different so um, say it's always been evolving there's never one thing I can like call back on even sh the scenes that we reshot in shorts or from the Rambler short to the feature yeah didn't feel very familiar so I think every experience is new I just try to treat it like that yeah I witnessed some amazing uh, rapport between these two because they've been together for a long time and and work together you know so they're um, you know what would you call yourselves Colleagues, yeah. <laughs> call them colleagues. Um, but you know, when you see the film, you see what kind of real life jeopardy uh, Lindsay is put in um, by her man Calvin. <laughs> so I'm like, you guys are good with this. I'm good with this. Yeah. But uh, underneath all that was this incredible protective instinct that I saw that surfaced itself really just once or twice, and I knew as much as he was asking of her. The main thing, of course, was her safety and her mental well-being. So there, I, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken or not speaking out of turn, I think Calvin pulled the plug 
once or twice just on her behalf because really the stuff that she Lindsay was asked to do physically is beyond what anyone's really capable of yeah. and yet she did it and he made her do it anyhow <laughs> yeah. yeah that's my boyfriend that's my man <laughs> do, you, do, do you guys though have a different like after you know going off and doing you know justified and um you know true blood and having these kind of What's weird is that they've both also become such cult things. Yeah. And of course, Calvin, you know, gets that word associated with him all the time too. Right. But um, is there a different viewfinder for you looking back at Calvin now that you've been well, on these shows? I, I absolutely love working with him because we do have a shorthand. And I know his, now that we've been together for a while, I know his brain really well. And I can almost visualize how everything is going to look and how it's going to sound. And um, that to me is really exciting because... I know in the back of my mind, oh my god, this is going to be incredible, or this is going to be so fucked up, or, you know, like, it's just, I, I know his brain so well, and that's could really you, fun to see. Could you ever have kind of foreseen all that sort of stuff happening back in Pile Driver Little Farm? Days? Absolutely not, but I will say, when he first gave me the script for Pile Driver, I didn't know him at all. We yeah. met in an acting class. And I was kind of skeptical. I was like, all right, yeah, I'll read this and we'll see. <laughs> but I read it and I was instantly hooked. I was like, this is so weird. And, you know, as soon as I met him, I just, you know, I fell for him. He's just, he's got a really great, great mind. So. But like you say, look at it, Justified or True Blood. You know, yeah. Lindsay, for whatever reason, <laughs> yeah. it is an actress that you can really go to when it comes to the bizarre. That's true. Yeah. You know, and yet in real life, she doesn't really give off that <laughs> sensation <laughs> necessarily. At least not to me. Um, so I I'm find that fast. <laughs> I find that <laughs> fascinating that you keep getting called up to go bloody or to go, uh, you know, Great. to go out to the deep end. There's yeah, something really malleable about her, though. You know, you like watch her perform. She's so natural as a director. It's and true. I think probably the directors that you know audition you look like oh we can make you do anything and you have this look that we can totally play against yeah that's true. exciting yeah, yeah. yeah that's so do you still have you're from Utah originally I am yeah so do you I'm still have city. family up here and stuff? I do and they're all going to be at the screening oh, our Salt Lake shit. screening they're they're huge you know they're very big supporters of of Calvin and um, it's it, it's fun you know a lot of my family's Mormon half my family's Mormon and half of them aren't but even the Mormons come, <laughs> so it's uh, it's kind of fun. And what about just in terms of logistics? Where'd you shoot this up in the Pacific Northwest again? Or? No, uh, we shot it sadly uh, down in uh, New Mexico. But you know, even Jimmy Buffett left Key West. So <laughs> sometimes you gotta leave the nest. <laughs> Val Kilmer territory. But not not Val Kilmer territory. <laughs> Southern New Mexico, yeah. Roswell, <laughs> so southeastern New Mexico. So much different look than you see a lot of films uh, yeah. take out of Santa Fe or or a Taos to Suki, so, you know, th this is a different place. Yeah, yeah th I know it was probably written like his shorts right. with the uh, woods in mind, but for myriad oh, yeah. reasons we find ourselves in, like, dusty cul-de-sac city of the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is that, like, a just incentives and all that sort of stuff? Or? I really got excited about the idea in New Mexico, and it was really easy to switch uh, the initial vision. So um, yeah. incentive definitely played a part of it. It's like, which of the incentive states do you want to shoot in? And New Mexico was my first choice. Yeah. And what it provided for you was uh, was the soul of the movie, that it's just shifted in his ability to do that so uh, fast so with such facility. It was awesome, and what we got were amazing locations with uh, like Sulphur Springs and weird yeah. landscapes that we, you wouldn't have found in the Northwest. You'd have another Absolutely. quality, but this gave it some sort of grotesque yeah. um, yes. uh, aspects. So can we expect to see uh, the equivalent of the hippie witches and the green first suited people and stuff? I, I think we'll exceed it. Yeah. yeah, I think we'll exceed it. <laughs> hey, let's be honest. Uh, Calvin and I had a, had a conversation about, uh, about the Oregonian and... and, uh, and you know, one of his big concerns was that the blood didn't match very well. You know what I mean? When you cut to the next thing, you shot two days later, yeah. and she's still all bloody on the head, that maybe that drip is there or yeah. whatever. And so you cut it right next to each other, and it jumps out. So I'll say to Calvin, uh, and there's a lot of cigarette smoking in this movie too, which you always have to, right you have to match that. Yep. Impeccable. <laughs> so as good as the Oregonian was in terms of continuity, <laughs> The Rambler's better. Yeah. Outdone himself. Outdone himself with continuity. Well, that's the one thing really they can't good. take away from us. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Look I had one friend who invites me yeah. to a screening of his movie, and he's just got a small role, but I go to support him. And afterwards, I was like, you know, it wasn't much of a film. He knew it, I knew it, so I was just like, 
dude, your continuity was incredible. <laughs> they cut between those shots and your hand was in exactly the same spot. I mean, it was just amazing. So we're going to switch out the adjective cult to continuity, Calvin. Exactly. That would be great. I would, I would, like, to, I would like to be a pioneer. No, what he did is he took all that he's brought to Sundance up till now and put it in a, in a, in like an ironclad package. So you get it all in, uh, like you were talking about the sound design and different coloration and visual effects, you know, minor effects here and there. And frankly, practical effects Lots that practical will effects. really blow you away. I mean, stuff that Well, that's explodes. what's cool as well is that it seems like on this one, you got a bigger play, play kit. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Uh, a couple of extra people to help you out so you didn't have to do absolutely everything yourself. And yeah. For me, it was gigantic. I think for these guys, it was still very small. But, <laughs> <laughs> but everybody approached this job with the dedication yeah. that it yeah. needed because otherwise, if it didn't have that intensity, it wouldn't be the film it is. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Including well, the crew, I mean to say. Yeah. Well, we're, we're thrilled to have you come by here on the day of your premiere. Wishing you all the best tonight. Thanks. Enjoy Thanks. it. Thanks. And hopefully we'll get to see you soon.